online students is my voice audible please respond in the chat box yeah perfect good evening everyone in the last week we had four classes in those sessions we discussed theoretical part of this course like what is software project why we need to develop software projects and how many types of software projects are available in the market how many types of software companies available and what is the interview process in those companies and how many types of jobs available in the it industry how many types of teams available what is onshore team what is offshore team that we discussed and how the communication will happen between onshore team and offshore team through bridge calls we discussed and we discussed about minutes of meeting in the software team that means when we are having the meeting we need to note down the summary of the meeting that is called minutes of meeting so in every meeting one person is responsible for this mom preparation once the meeting is completed we need to send the summary of the meeting to all the participants who joined in that meeting then we discussed about bench in the it bench nothing but the people who are not allocated to any project those people are called as bench resources right once you joined in the company again project round will be available some people will call it as a client round some people will call it as a project round so once you got selected to the company again that project round will be available once you got selected in the project round then you will be part of the project project allocation will happen if you are not selected for any project then you will be called as bench resource you are not billable resource that means client will not pay the money for you company has to pay the salary for bench resources when you are on the bench you need to try to get the projects by talking to your hr hr will find out the projects which are having the requirement and they will schedule your interview with the project manager if you got selected then you will be allocated to that project if you are rejected you need to try for other project in the company good fine from today onwards we are going to talk about real time tools so in order to work in the project development only java knowledge is not sufficient along with the java you need to work with some tools also every java developer whether you are a fresher or whether you are experienced person you need to work with these tools right what are the tools available and what is the purpose of those tools that we are going to learn today good so the first one is build tools if you want to work with any project then build tools are required in the market we are having ant maven and gradle so these tools are called as build tools ant tool got outdated in the market currently in the market people are using either maven or gradle so what we are going to do by using this build tools create project folder structure okay if you want to develop one web application what is the project folder structure if you want to create one uh, enterprise application or a distributed application or stand alone application what is the folder structure instead of you are creating the folder structure this build tools will help you to create the project folder structure and another major advantage with the build tools download dependencies or we can say download libraries in order to develop the project only java is not sufficient along with java we need a database driver we need a hibernate jar files we need a spring jar files we need spring boot jar files servlet jar files are required the jars that are required to develop our project are called as libraries so instead of we are downloading the libraries from the websites 
you can ask build tool to download the required libraries for the project and these build tools are going to compile our project compile source code if it is one program or two programs you can compile but when you go for the project thousands of classes will be available compiling the project will take time so to simplify that compilation process we are going to use build tools then next one package our application our application will be packaged in the form of jar file or var file instead of we are packaging the project we can take the help of build tools to package the application so every project will use build tool earlier people work with the ant now people are not using ant people are using either maven or gradle maven will support only java language whereas gradle support other programming languages also if your project is only java based then you can go with maven suppose i want the build tool for my kotlin project my groovy project also then we can go for gradle so by using these build tools we can create project folder structure we can download required libraries what is the meaning of libraries guys like spring hibernate junit etc these all are the libraries we are using in our project development instead of we are downloading the libraries these build tools will download the required libraries for our project then we can compile our source code by using build tools then we will package our application as a jar file or var file using build tools so finally we can say what is the purpose of build tools build tools are used to automate build process they are used to automate build process of the application build process nothing but download the required libraries add the libraries to the class path compile the project to source code and package our project as a jar file or var file that is called build process instead of we are doing that build process manually we can automate that build process by using build tools every java developer should work with the build tools today in the market java developers are using spring boot to create the project without using maven or gradle you cannot create the spring boot project you have to go with either maven or gradle without build tool you cannot create the spring boot project so that's why every java developer should know how to work with build tools what is the main purpose of build tools build tools are used to automate project build process what is the meaning of a project build process download the libraries compile the source code package our application as a jar file or var file what build tools are famous in the java community maven and gradle maven only for java projects gradle java plus other languages also it is going to support good so after build tools the next thing is repository servers nothing but source code repository servers or we can say source code repository tools in the market people are using github and bitbucket people are using github and bitbucket right now in a project multiple developers will be available guys a project development nothing but a team of developers will be available and those developers will be working from same location or different different locations all the developers will work in the same location or developers will work in the different different locations developers are going to work in the different different locations now assume that here one developer is available working in the bangalore hyderabad location there is one developer working in bangalore location one developer working in hyderabad one developer chennai one developer delhi so four developers are there four developers are working from four different locations all are working for the same project now all the developers code we need to integrate at one place then only we can compile and we can run our application one person is working on login functionality one person working on registration functionality 
one person working on forget password one person working on report functionality so developers are working from different different locations they are working for the same project different different functionalities they are developing do you think that manager will go to every developer with the pen drive please give your code please give your code no that's not possible right so developers are working in the different locations all the developers code should be integrated at one place so to integrate all the developers code at one place we are going to use code repository server which is called source code repository server what we need guys we need source code repository server what is the purpose of source code repository server to integrate all the developers code at one place so that code integration to simplify code integration to simplify code integration we are going for source code repository servers like servers like github some companies are using github some companies are using bitbucket so to simplify code integration and to provide monitored access what is the meaning of monitored access who is doing what in the source code yesterday i have committed my code into github but today my code is not available who modified when modified why modified what modified everything we should be able to track that is called monitored access so when you go for the source code repository servers we are going to simplify code integration process and the second advantage is monitored access will be available for our project source code why because yesterday my code is working as expected today my code is not working some changes happened in my program who modified my program why they modified when they modified what they modified i should be able to track it if we if we don't have that tracking then what is the problem ha uh -huh. yesterday my code is working today my code is not working manager will ask you where is your code can you tell somebody remove my code who is that somebody you need to tell them that right so that is the reason for everything tracking will be available okay so how do we get the tracking for our code changes by using source code repository servers what are the source code repository servers available in the market github is available bitbucket is available with the help of this source code repository servers we can simplify code integration in the project all the developers code will be integrated at one place that is one advantage the second advantage monitored access what what is the meaning of monitored access who when why what who modified when modified why modified what modified everything you can track by using this repository servers when we are working with the repository servers we should be very 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 careful because of your changes other changes should not be affected whatever the code you have written when you are integrating your code you should not overwrite the code done by other developers so you should be very careful when you are integrating your code if you do small mistake the project will be collapsed so you should be very careful when we are working with this repository server so first one build tools what is the purpose of build tools they are used to automate build process what we can do by using build tool download the libraries compile the source code package the source code as a jar or var what is the purpose of source code repository servers they are used to simplify code integration and they will provide monitored access for our application then next one logging tools logging tools will be available so we do have log4j log back and log stash so there are several tools available which are used to implement logging for our application so what is the meaning of logging for our application generate application log messages to generate logging tools are used to generate application 
log messages Lo why application log messages should be generated what is the purpose of log messages log messages are used to understand application runtime behavior however project is getting executed what are the issues are occurring in the application what exception occurred in which method the exception occurred why that exception occurred we need to monitor the application runtime behavior to monitor the runtime behavior of the application we are going to implement logging so to implement logging for our project some logging tools are required what are the logging tools available log4j log back and log stash now see what will happen in the project development so here here our project code is available that a project code will be deployed into one server assume that this is a machine inside this machine one server is available inside the server our application is running this server is available in the us east zone okay in the united states of america in the east zone there is a computer in that computer there is a server inside that server our application is running so customers are accessing our application from different different locations so many requests are coming to our application from across the world our application is accessible where is our application it is running inside the server the server is available in one computer that computer is available in the us okay users are accessing our application everything is fine but today from morning 10 am onwards people are not able to pay the amount for their order in the application so people are using our application they are making some orders in our application but today from morning 10 o'clock onwards customers are not able to do the payments there is some problem so now if the if application payments are failing do you need to roll down on the floor and cry no what we need to do we need to figure out where is the problem we need to troubleshoot the code to understand where is the problem from when problem is occurring where is the problem what problem is occurring which program which method which line number for which user the problems are coming we need to track those problems in our application to do that a tracking of the application problems we are going to implement logging in our application so for every application one log file will be created so when the application is executing application execution details will be stored into one log file are you guys getting my point so the process of storing application execution details to the log file is called logging the process of storing application execution details to the log file is called logging how do we perform logging in our application to perform logging in the application we are going to use some logging tools what are the logging tools are available <coughs> what are the logging tools are available we are having log4j log back log stash so logging is very 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 important in every project suppose for example if this logging is not available in the project if the logging is not available in the project can you understand where is the problem in the project no it is because in our project there are thousand classes available in every class there are 10 methods available thousand into 10 10000 methods are available how do you identify in which method problem is occurred it is very very difficult so that is the reason in the project we are going to implement logging logging is going to help us in understanding application execution behavior the process of storing application execution details to the file is called logging to perform that logging we are using some tools log4j logback and logstash okay See this guy is sleeping and listening to that class. Yeah, bye.
people are laying on the bed and they are attending the classes man i told you multiple times don't join the class from mobile join the class from laptop so that you will have focus okay now here logging log back log stash is available these all are the implementations for slf4j what is slf4j that we will see in the future okay fine once the logging is available then we need to go for log monitoring tools okay so there are several tools available like putty efk is available splunk is also available okay efk and splunk is available these are called as log monitoring tools logging is different log monitoring is different logging means that is what we do in our code so in our program we will implement the logging so that application execution details will be stored into log file my server is in the us okay my log file is also available in the us this is the architecture okay my server is in the us my log file is also available in the us now i want to understand where is the problem in our project i am a developer i am sitting in the hyderabad location high tech city my office is available in high tech city i am in high tech city today morning i got a call from my manager hey ashok people are not able to log in in our application from today morning 9 am could you please check what is the problem so from high tech city immediately go to shamshabad airport catch the flight go to us and see what is the problem is it possible no from hyderabad only i should be able to see what is the problem in the server so that's why from my system from i have one system company provided one laptop for me okay from my laptop i should be able to connect to the log file my system and me we are available in hyderabad location my server is available in the us my log file is also available in the us so from my laptop i should be able to connect to the server in which our log file is available here guys as a developer you need to know linux operating system the reason is the server which we are using to run our application is a linux computer we will use windows laptop windows computers only for the development purpose but our project deployment will happen on the linux computer now manager will tell you hey from today morning 10 o'clock our application is not working can you check logs of our application where is the log file in a computer available in the us that computer is a linux computer how do you connect to the linux computer how do you how do you get the log file from the linux computer that's why linux commands you should know you should know how to work with the linux computer are you guys getting my point so windows we are using in our laptop but in the company we need to work with the linux computers so as part of our course we will learn the linux also how to create a linux machine how to deploy the project in the linux how to get the log file from the linux so you will learn some linux concepts also as part of the syllabus getting my point if i don't teach linux it's not a real time because in the real time the execution will happen only on the linux machine are you getting my point good now how do you connect from our windows machine to linux machine to connect from windows machine to linux machine we will use a software called putty what is that putty putty is a mediator between windows computer and linux computer i have my windows computer here my linux computer in the us from my windows i should connect to the linux to get the log file that's where we are going to use putty you can use putty you can use winscp you can use moba extram there are several tools available to do the same operation putty winscp moba extram i will show you all those three very easy already i made one video also in the youtube 
how to connect with the linux machine by using putty software so if you see putty ashok it that's it where is that somewhere it should come man easy to ha ah. how to connect with the ec2 linux instance using putty one year back i have uploaded one video so here in this video i explain what is linux vm how to create one virtual machine using linux operating system how to connect with aws ec2 linux instance by using putty software why we need to connect to that linux machine guys to connect why we should connect to the linux machine to connect to the in the linux machine only our log file is available you see the black color window that is called putty like our cli now by using this putty software i connected to the linux machine that linux machine is available in the aws cloud in that linux machine my log file will be available so to get the data from the log file i need to use the linux commands ls hyphen l cat command tail command head command grep command so we are going to use those linux commands by using putty software so in the real time in the real time as a developer we are going to use the logging to generate log messages of our application to the log file how do you get the data from the log file to get the data from the log file we will use putty or winsap or mobi extra this concept will work out if your project is a monolithic application in the last session we discussed what is a monolithic application what is a monolithic application come on what is a monolithic application everything will be available in one system in one server the complete project code available as one var file so we will deploy that into one server when our application running in one server one log file will be generated so to get that data from that one log file we will connect to that log file by using putty and we can get the logs and we can understand where is the problem then we can fix the problem this is okay if you are going with the monolithic architecture but currently in the market what is happening micro services so here portals api is available okay and flights api is available and trains api is available so this api is nothing but three different projects these are three different apis running in the three different servers when we have three different servers then what will happen one log file will be available three log file will be available if it is a monolithic application one log file will be available happily you can connect with one log file to get the data by using putty but in the reality the project is developing based on microservices architecture so there are multiple microservices available every microservice running in the separate server for every microservice separate log file is available then so these three log files are available in three servers now i have only one machine by using windows from my windows machine i want to get the logs from hotels log file it is available in one computer i need to get the logs of flights i need to get the logs of trains so earlier when you go for monolith everything is available in one server one log file available from my system directly i can connect to that log file and i can get the log messages but in the reality monolith is outdated in the real time microservices available when you go for microservices there are three apis available currently i am taking three but in the real time 20 30 40 50 apis also will be available if there are 50 apis can you imagine 50 servers available 50 log files available 50 log files available in the 50 different computers how do you get the data easy why not easy if it is in one file or two files i can go to that file and i can get the data i have 50 microservices 50 log files are created 50 log files in the same system 50 log files in the different different systems 
different different systems then how do you get those logs now is it difficult getting the data from the 50 systems getting the data from the 50 files is it or difficult ha huh. to overcome this problem what we need to do is we need to go for centralized logging what is that centralized logging so what are the log files available all the log files data we need to keep at one place so so that developers no need to connect to the 50 log files separately so your application having 50 services that is okay 50 log files available that is also okay but don't ask developers to check all the 50 log files for the exception all 50 log files data should come to one place that is called centralized logging what is that centralized logging when we implement this centralized logging concept in the project then developers can easily monitor logs of the application to centralize the logging of the application we are going to use a concept called efk and splunk we are using a concept called efk and splunk efk stands for elastic search fluentd and kibana it is 100% damn sure question in the interview how do you monitor logs of your application you need to tell either elk or splunk in a project any one will be used either elk efk will be used or splunk will be used splunk is a commercial software efk is a open source software okay if the client is giving the money then companies will purchase the license of the Splunk to centralize logging of the application if a client does not have the budget then companies will go for EFK to monitor logs of the application what will happen when you go for the EFK here the logs are available in the different different systems all these logs we need to store at one place that is called elastic search this is a place where all the logs will be stored this is the place all the logs will be stored there should be some person who will get the logs from the log files and store into elastic search the person who will do this duty that person is called fluentd what is the fluentd now fluentd is a software which is responsible to get the logs from the log files and store into elastic search once the logs are stored in the elastic search somebody should provide the log messages for the developer that's where kibana comes into picture kibana will provide user interface to monitor the logs kibana will get the logs from elastic search fluentd will collect the logs from the log file will store into elastic search from the elastic search kibana will get the log kibana will provide the log messages for us so this is called centralized logging to implement this centralized logging we are going for efk e stands for elastic search f stands for fluentd k stands for kibana ha huh. now see here go to ashoka it youtube channel search for efk already there Yeah, what is this video? Seven months back, I uploaded one video. Logs monitoring by using EFK stack. EFK stack I have configured in the Kubernetes cluster to monitor logs of our application. So there is a lot of useful content in our YouTube channel. You just need to know how to search it. Okay, go to this one. So this is EFK architecture. My microservices are running. Microservices, nothing but backend APIs available. In a project, multiple backend APIs will be available. Every backend API will run in a separate server. For every backend API, one log file will be available. There are three log files are available. Three log files data we need to read. For that, which is software we are going to use? Fluentd. Fluentd will read the logs from the log file. Where it is going to store? Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is like a log database. All the microservices logs will be stored in the 
एलास्टिक सेट हू विल डिस्प्ले द लॉक्स फॉर द प्रोग्रामर किबाना हाउ किबाना विल गेट द लॉक्स इट विल गेट द लॉक्स फ्रॉम द एलास्टिक सेट एंड विल डिस्प्ले टू अस विद द यूजर इंटरफेस सो आई हैव एक्सप्लेन हाउ टू कॉन्फिगर दैट ईएफके स्टैक इन द लाइन एक्स मशीन वंस यू कॉन्फिगर द ईएफके दिस काइंड ऑफ डैशबोर्ड दिस इज कॉल्ड किबाना डैशबोर्ड दिस इज किबाना डैशबोर्ड दिस इज माय एप्लीकेशन व्हेन आई एग्जीक्यूट माय एप्लीकेशन लॉक्स विल बी जनरेटेड द लॉक्स विल बी गैदर्ड बाय फ्लूएंटी स्टोर इनटू एलास्टिक सेट किबाना विल गेट द लॉक्स फ्रॉम द एलास्टिक सेट विल डिस्प्ले टू अस व्हेन आई गो फॉर किबाना आई कैन सेट व्हाट टाइम द लॉग इज जनरेटेड which class which method what date what time i can filter the logs by using this kibana so you see here in that video i explained how to set up the efk and how to monitor the logs by using efk now you see when i executed product saved april 10th 2023 at 1144 the product got saved okay so the exact date time based on logs we are going to get so manager will tell morning 10 o'clock onwards people are not able to log in i will go to the kibana i will select the date as morning today morning 10 o'clock to 10:30 in that half an hour i will i will act like a detective i will understand what happened for that half an hour in the project why the exceptions occurred which program which method which line number we are going to check the information like this this is called log monitoring logging is required log monitoring is also required what is logging what is logging the process of storing application execution details to the log file is called logging which tool we will use to perform the logging which tool we are going to use log back log stash tools we are going to use to monitor logs of our application are you clear with this one next one log monitoring logging is different log monitoring is different okay so we need to we need to get we need to get logs of application to understand to understand behavior we need to get the logs of application to understand behavior what tools we are going to use we have several softwares to get the logs so right log monitoring tools putty available efk available splunk available we need to get the logs of application to understand which behavior run time behavior log monitoring tools will help us to get the logs of the application you got the clarity what is logging what is log monitoring logging means store the execution details to the file log monitoring means get the data from the log file putty winscp splunk efk available in the market build tools to automate the build process source code repository to integrate the developer's code at one place logging tools to generate log messages log monitoring tools to get the logs of the application next one code review tools code review tools pmd available and sonar cube is also available code review tools are used to understand developers mistakes in the code so in a project multiple developers will be available freshers will be available experienced people also will be available everybody will not follow same standards while writing the code some people are good developers they will follow all the best practices some people bad developers they don't follow good best practices to write the code so here in order to figure out what are the mistakes done by the developers in the project we are going to use a software called sonar cube first pmd pmd stands for programmer mistake detector earlier people used it to work with the pmd now people are going for sonar sonar cube right what is the purpose of that sonar cube <coughs> what is the purpose of the sonar cube code review what is the meaning of code review identify identify developer mistakes 
identify developers mistakes in the source code developers mistakes means best practices they will not check your logic is correct or not it is called static analysis static analysis means are you following all the java rules or not are you following all the best practices or not those things will be identified by sonar cube identify developer mistakes in the source code sonar cube software we are going to use then next one unit testing software unit testing software j unit with a mocking what is unit testing what is unit testing what is the purpose of unit testing test individual components of our application i have written one method in the dao that the dao method is working as expected or not we are going to test it that is called individual component testing individual component testing is called as unit testing to perform the unit testing we will use one software which is called j unit j unit is called as unit testing framework to execute our code what is the benefit of unit testing what is the benefit of unit testing <coughs> to identify what are the problems available in our code so before you are giving your the code to the tester you need to test your code is working as expected or not for that we are going to perform unit testing test individual components of our application to provide quality code to provide bug free code okay whenever you write the code sometimes our code may not work as expected so before giving our code to the tester we need to check are there any problems in our code we need to run our code to verify is that code working as expected or not for that we are going to perform unit testing to perform unit testing for our application we are going to use j unit plus mocking so j unit plus mocking we are going to use to perform unit testing of our application then next one we will be using code coverage tools we are using code coverage tools like jacoco there is a tool called jacoco what is the meaning of this code coverage why we need to go for code coverage to check to check which lines of code is executed in unit testing and which lines are which lines are missed in unit testing in our application 1000 lines of code is available out of this 1000 for how many lines developers completed unit testing for how many lines developers not completed unit you cannot say to your manager mera unit testing ho gaya so if you say my unit testing is completed they will see code coverage report there they will catch you out of 1000 lines you have tested only 500 lines remaining 500 lines are not tested this is the proof so for everything tracking will be available jhoot nahi bol sakte bhai you can't lie to your managers in the company because for everything there will be tracking right so whenever you say my unit testing is completed manager will ask send code coverage report so when you generate the to generate the code coverage report we are going to use a software called jacoco what that jacoco will tell ha huh. in our project which lines of code is executed in the unit testing and which lines of code is not executed in the unit testing industry standard 80% of code coverage industry standard is 80% coverage that means for every 100 lines minimum 80 lines code should be tested if you write 1000 lines 800 lines code should be tested minimum 
if you don't test then your code is not accepted so the, you need to maintain code coverage 80 percent for your project then only that code will be accepted otherwise it will not be accepted are you clear look at this code coverage which tool we are using for code coverage jacoco what is the meaning of code coverage to check which lines of code is executed in the unit testing and which lines of code is missed in the unit testing what is the industry standard for this one industry standard is 80 percent of the code coverage okay what is unit testing testing individual components of our application is called unit testing so why we need to go for unit testing to provide bug free code we are going for the unit testing what is the sonar cube to perform the code review why with the code review required to identify developers mistakes in the source code what is the efk elastic search file bit kibana they are used to monitor all the logs of the application from one place to centralize log monitoring we are going to use efk what is the log back log stash to generate the log messages of the application what is the github source code repository server all the developers code will be stored at one place next one maven and gradle build tools they are used to automate build process of the project okay the next one is jira project management there is a tool called jira jira is called as a project management the complete project work will be managed by jira so tomorrow once you join in the company task assignment will happen through the jira and in your code if any bugs available testing team will report the bug by using jira jira will be used as a project management software as well as bug reporting software your coding is completed testers are testing your code when the testers are testing they identified that some functionality not working then how do you tell that there is a bug by using jira jira is called as a project management software it is also used for bug reporting also used for bug reporting then next one we are going to use a software called jenkins jenkins is called ci cd server which is used to automate project build and deployment process okay so here once you keep your code in the github automatically it should take your code it should deploy your code into server that is called automating build and deployment process to automate build and deployment process to automate build and deployment process we will use jenkins okay if you modify the code in the github automatically the code will be compiled automatically code will be deployed to the server everything can be automated the build and deployment process can be automated by using jenkins software jenkins is called as ci cd let me show you jenkins ashok it this video is trending in the YouTube in the last last one year back I uploaded this video 1,20,000 views for that video so it is one of the top most watched video in our channel that much demand is there for the Jenkins so in the real time the complete project build and deployment process will be automated by using Jenkins software right so in this video I have explained how do we automate the build and deployment process now I have created one Jenkins job also I have created one Jenkins job also in order to automate that build and deployment process you see here this is my Jenkins tool so in this Jenkins tool I have the job whenever I trigger the job it will take the code from the github it is going to deploy the code into our Tomcat server complete build and deployment automation can be done by using Jenkins right next we are going to use containerization software containerization for the containerization we are going to use docker 
so right what is the meaning of containerization i want to run my computer i want to run my project in 10 computers in the 10 computers i need to install java to run my java application right i have a project my project i want to test in the 10 computers to test my project in the 10 computers i have to install java in 10 computers right only java not sufficient i want to database i want to tomcat server i want angular all the softwares we need to install in the system to run the project but if you go for a docker you no need to do that docker will take care of required softwares to run your application so when i say softwares like java database tomcat angular these all comes under softwares libraries are different softwares are different guys libraries will be taken care by maven or gradle softwares will be taken care by docker to run my application java application i want to spring jar files can i ask docker to download the spring no spring libraries will be downloaded by maven to run my application i want java 17 version java 17 will be downloaded by docker to run my application mysql database is required mysql database will be downloaded by docker to run my project spring boot jars are required can i ask docker to download the spring boot no so libraries are different softwares are different libraries will be taken care by build tool softwares will be taken care by containerization tool which is called docker so we can simplify we can simplify app execution process in any computer we can simplify app execution process in any computer by using docker okay i want to run my project to run my project there are several softwares required java tomcat database angular typescript node like that some softwares are required instead of we are installing all the softwares we can take the help of the docker docker will download docker will install all the softwares that are required to run our application that is called containerization so it will package our code plus softwares to run in any computer that is called containerization nowadays in the market every application is executing as a container every project whether it is java dot net python php any technology they are using containers to run the application to run our application inside a container docker is required once docker containers are available we need one manager to manage those containers the process of managing is called as orchestration for the orchestration purpose we are using a software called kubernetes docker is called containerization software orchestration is called kubernetes is called orchestration what is the meaning of orchestration managing containers i mean to say creation deletion scale up scale down increase the container count decrease the container count is called scaling scale up scale down create the container delete the container that management part for the containers will be taken care by kubernetes kubernetes is called as orchestration platform so in the project docker kubernetes are very very important docker is used for containerization purpose kubernetes is used for orchestration purpose there are only jobs for people who knows docker and kubernetes okay so in the companies that much demand is available for docker and kubernetes let's go to naukari and check it go to naukari website now skill docker 
search what they are looking guys dockers and kubernetes senior engineer who knows kubernetes and docker who knows kubernetes and docker docker jenkins docker ci cd jenkins docker now python docker linux devops engineer docker kubernetes java developer spring boot docker in the cgi company they are looking for the java developers who knows docker so docker is not only for the devops people even java developers also should know the docker devops engineer aws docker kubernetes senior devops engineer lead developer kubernetes docker deployment engineer the company looking only for the people the company looking for the people who knows kubernetes and docker so so can i say that there are openings for the people only on the docker and kubernetes there are some companies who are looking for the people who knows docker and kubernetes that much demand is there for those tools in the market docker and kubernetes so for that for the devops engineers they are mandatory docker kubernetes jenkins now as a java developer if you know those three tools when you go for the interview by keeping jenkins docker kubernetes what will happen extra advantage oh this person not only developer he can work as a devops engineer also multi skill multi skill is added advantage in the industry so jenkins docker kubernetes tools are very 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 important search in the naukari is there any job only for jenkins what they are asking jenkins and kubernetes ci cd jenkins and docker jenkins and kubernetes product hiring senior cloud devops engineer senior devops engineer oracle people sales for senior devops engineer senior devops engineer okay application and linux license administrator so there are jobs only for docker kubernetes and jenkins those are very very important tools what is kubernetes guys kubernetes is a orchestration platform what is the meaning of orchestration platform managing the docker containers what is a docker what is a docker docker is a containerization software we can simplify application execution process in any computer by using docker what is a jenkins it is used to automate build and deployment process jenkins is called as a ci cd software what is jira bug reporting software as well as task assignment software along with this we need to know postman what is a postman our back end microservices when we develop microservices to test them we are going to use a software called postman then we have swagger what is swagger for the api documentation we are using swagger jmeter why jmeter why jmeter how your application is working when multiple people accessing your application at a time what is the stability of your application what is the responsiveness of your application you can test by using a tool called jmeter okay postman is used for api testing swagger is used for api documentation jmeter is used for performance testing kafka which is a streaming message broker to send the messages from one application to another application we will use apache kafka as a message broker next one redis caching which is used for caching what is the meaning of caching what is the meaning of caching temporary storage to avoid to reduce to reduce number of db calls in our system we are going to implement 
redis cache redis cache is a temporary storage where your application can get the data from the cache instead of communicating with the database kafka message broker jmeter for performance testing swagger for api testing swagger for api documentation postman for api testing so as a java developer you need to know all these tools to work in the real time so that is the reason we have announced it as 20 plus tools as part of the project now so as part of this course as part of this course we are going to learn 20 plus tools okay and we are going to learn two mini projects one major project along with that you are going to learn linux along with that you are going to learn aws along with that you are going to learn angular so you see so if you focus properly for the next three to four months of time you are going to become three plus years of experience developer you are going to become three plus years of experience developer in the market people will charge 5000 for angular for aws people will charge 8000 for linux people will charge 3000 for java project for tools and java project they will charge you 5000 a student will pay how much if you join for these courses in other institute java project they will ask you 5000 for aws they will ask 8000 for angular they will ask 5000 for linux they will ask 3000 but here when i say for all these things the fees is 8000 people are asking sir please give a discount when people are asking sir for jrtp fees is 8000 please come give some discount for the jrtp so when i say 8000 you compare what content we are covering as part of this course is there any institute who is giving all this content for 8000 then what discount i need to give man so many people call today whatsapp message mail i am previous batch student of ashok it please give some discount for jrtp i am already doing the spring boot microservice in ashok it please give the discount for the jrtp what discount i need to offer in order to give the discount from next time what we need to tell jrtp 7000 aws 5000 angular 5000 15000 discount 12000 that is a business game that is what people will do in the market but here for 8000 we are giving these many technologies still you guys are asking discount you just compare the syllabus in Amirpet there are institutes who are providing java real time project you just take our course content and give it to them are you covering this content then they will ask pay 50000 we will cover this content java and that too microservices i am giving for free separately if you want to attend microservices it is 5000 in this content i am adding 20 plus tools and i am giving microservices also anybody will provide this much content for 8000 is there any institute which will give you all these things for 8000 rupees no only in ashok id will get that there are ed tech companies who are charging 80000 rupees for java full stack whatever the content i am covering in the project batch they will not cover 10 percent of that also that is for sure you go to any ed tech company ask their java full stack content ask their project development content you compare that content with our content you compare their fee structure with our fee structure then you will realize you just imagine covering linux aws angular microservices 20 plus tools for 8000 dead cheap price dead cheap price you are getting for that okay it's not my words guys tomorrow when you have free time you go to four five institutes in the amir pet you just enquire i'm not asking you to join there you just go there and enquire what they are charging what they are covering as part of the project then you will realize 
why you should join only in Ashok IT for the project batch. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so, so today we understood what are the tools that we are going to learn as part of our project development course. As I told you, 20 tools that are required for the developers we are going to learn. And that too, these are 20 tools will not be used in one project in the company guys. As I already told you, in my 11 years of experience, I got the chance to work with all these tools. Different companies, different projects. If you go for your job tomorrow, in your project, maybe 10 tools will be available. All the 20 tools will not be available in the single project. Okay, but we are going to learn all those tools. If you mention all these tools in your resume, the person will get impressed by seeing your resume. In these three years of time, this person learned so many tools. So that will give special impression for that guy who is taking your interview. In some companies, they are recognizing you are from Ashok IT by keeping these many tools in the resume. Okay, so good. So with this, we understood what are the tools we are going to do. Tomorrow, we are going to start with Maven. First, we are going to start with the Maven tool. So before coming to tomorrow's session, I want you to set up a Maven in your system. Okay, Maven directly you can use without setting up also. But as a best practice, you can do the Maven setup. Okay, Maven setup Ashok IT. I uploaded one video to understand how to do the Maven setup in your Windows machine. So I will share this video in our WhatsApp group. So in this video, I explain how to do the Maven setup in our Windows computer. Maven setup in the Windows machine, right? So I have given the steps and I explained the process, how to do the Maven setup and how to create one Maven project in the CLI. So I will share this video link in the chat box. Please go through that video and complete the Maven setup before coming to tomorrow's session. So tomorrow we'll start our discussion related to Maven. Clear? Good. Any questions from offline? No questions? Okay. So with this, our three sessions got completed. This is the sixth class, right? So if you want to continue the classes from tomorrow, people should complete their enrollment process. Six classes completed. You got the idea whether this course is suitable for you or not, whether this course is required for you or not, now you can decide. If you are interested to continue for the classes, so you need to complete your enrollment process by tomorrow. Same thing for people who are attending in the online also. Our free sessions got completed guys. You need to enroll yourself to continue the classes from tomorrow. So the people who enroll for this course, they will get the access to our website. So they will get the access for the portal to access daily class notes and backup videos also. Zoom link also will be available in the website only. So already I think you know how to access our website. So once you log in into our website with your account, then you can see the course content, the course whatever is there you can see that and the Zoom link will be available, notes will be available in the website, backup videos also will be available in the website. Admin people will guide you how to access the Zoom link, how to access the backup videos. In the tomorrow's class, I will also show once again how to access that backup video class notes. So the people who are not part of the WhatsApp group, please join. I'm giving the WhatsApp group link in the chat box. WhatsApp group link I have given in the chat box. The people who are not part of the WhatsApp group, please join in that WhatsApp group. Course fees is 8,000 for live classes plus class notes. Course fees is 12,000 for live classes plus backup videos plus notes. Backup video access will be available for one year. Backup video access will be there for one year. Good.